श्री श्री बास विहारिणी जू की जय हो ब्रज किशोरी सेवा ट्रस्ट कंटिन्यूइंग ऑडियो रीडिंग ऑफ श्री हरि राय जी बड़े शिक्षा पत्र डे नाइन लेटर टू वर्सेस फिफ्टीन टू एटीन सब वैष्णव को जय श्री कृष्ण Verse fifteen, he cannot tolerate his bhaktas' distress or trivial attractions. He is an abode of compassion, displays complete innocence, and gives great importance to his devotees' commands. Tika fifteen, Shri Krishna removes all distress caused by worldly involvement, such as lust, anger, infatuation, pride, and jealousy. He killed Putana, who was the embodiment of ignorance, and thereby purged the de- devotees of this foolishness. For the devotees were incapable of ridding themselves of this ignorance, and so Sri Tagoji <coughs> appeared in Braj for this very purpose, and thereby granted them the bliss of his many pastimes. He gave them happiness and removed their sadness, for he is most benevolent and cannot tolerate sadness in his devotees. So, looking at his people, he assumes this form of total innocence. He re- his reasoning is that if devotees regard him as majestic, they will lose their compassion and affection towards him because they will think he nourishes and supports the whole world. What can I possibly feed him? Why would I need to offer him ornaments, clothes, and toys? If one regards everything as belonging to Sri Tagaji, then this affection disappears, and then grace-filled devotion is not attained. So Sri Tagaji plays as an innocent child who cries when hungry and stubbornly demands food from his mother in order to shower grace upon his devotees. In this mood, he can be satisfied by the merest offering, whereas devotees would find it difficult to offer things. When the mood of magnificence prevails, just as when Raja Bali found it impossible to give the three paces of land demanded from him, so Sri Krishna grants great grace, happiness to his devotees through this innocent form, and also fulfills his promise to his accepted Raja devotees. He told, in the, as told in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, some of those devotees. The devotees ask him to fetch a stool, a cradle, or sandals in return for some butter, or they tell him to dance, and he does as he is told. He does whatever makes those Raja devotees happy. Verse sixteen: Sri Krishna is intent upon containing his devotees into his own reality by removing their false sense of the world. He assumes the role of a child and is amazing from moment to moment. Tika sixteen. The heart and mind of Sri Tagaji's intimate devotees is not attached to the worldly home, but to him alone. So Sri Krishna enters their home to steal from them. When he steals their milk, yogurt, and butter, their mind must becomes focused upon him. They ponder thus: So Sri Krishna will be coming here soon to steal. He will play his flute and enchant our minds. Thus they forget their husbands, sons, and relatives, for their relationship with all of these is material. Sri Krishna removed all of the devotees' ignorance when he slew Putana. He is always intent upon their gaining one-pointed devotion to him. For this same reason, he made the inhabitants of Braj forego their sacrifice to Indra and instead offer everything to Sri Giriraji, in which form he himself accepted all their offerings. Through this pastime of his being present among them, their external senses withdrew into his consciousness, and through his pastime of being distant from them by going to the forest or another place, their mind and internal senses were also fully ensconced in his consciousness alone, as described in the Ras Panchadhyayi, the five chapters of the Shrimad Bhagavatam, which describe the Ras Lila pastimes. First of all, he played his flute and thereby called the gopis to leave their homes and come to him. <coughs> He then sported with every part of their being, thereby cleansing all their external senses. He then disappeared and entered their innermost hearts, purified them, and took up residence there. In this way, by giving the devotees the experience of both union with him and separation from him, he perfected the merging of their consciousness with his. By assuming the form of an innocent child and entering the devotees' houses, he was able to engage in many intimate pastimes with them. See- <coughs> Seeing the child. Their husbands and other family members, who were not enlightened to this grace-filled relationship, were not cast into any doubt about his intentions. In this way, Sri Tagaji satisfied the heartfelt longing of each and every devotee. Then, reassuming the form of a child, he returned home. Verse seventeen. 
One moment he appears to be angry, the next thing he seems to be happy. He is satisfied with the smallest thing offered to him by his devotees. He exclusively knows the innermost desire of his devotee's heart. Tika 17 In his pastimes as a child, he displays anger momentarily. If she or Shodaji becomes absorbed in her housework, he overturns the yogurt storage pot and feeds stolen butter to the monkeys and then rolls on the ground. Whatever she or Shodaji does to calm him down, he doesn't listen. He obstinately demands the moon or becomes very cross if there is not enough butter with his meal. Then at other times he laughs and is overjoyed to receive little gifts. For example, if Shinandaraji brings him a toy, a flower or some fruit, the gopis also present him with some new variety of foodstuff, butter or new small gifts. With these, Sri Thakurji is immensely satisfied. In return, he is always ready to fulfil these devotees' heart's desire. In fact, he is exclusively intent upon knowing their heartfelt sentiments. The Lord appears as a child in Sri Yashoda's home, purely to grant happiness to the devotees. So, in the grace-filled path, the Lord is known to be on the devotees, sorry, the Lord is known, the devotees will, to fulfill the devotees will to the exclusion of all other knowledge. Verse 18. Shri Krishna enjoys secret and mysterious pastimes and he is the embodiment of the essence of the devotee's private devotional moods. He behaves in contradictory ways and should be served very attentively. Tika 18 Shri Krishna is always intent upon sharing intimate pastimes with his devotees, as in the pastime of the great circle dance, the Ras Lila, in which Shri Krishna dances between every pair of gopis at the same time, and in which there are eight Krishnas in a circle of sixteen gopis. And for each and every devotee he makes endless pastimes, the circle dance, annoyance in love, playing in water, playing with them in very varieties of secret bowers in the forest of Vrindavan. Within the gopis' homes he plays as a child and then as a youth he has endless games associated with milking the cows in the cow pen. There is no limit to this ocean of pastimes, but he is especially attached to the intimate ones because there is no depicted mood. Krishna is there in full of divine loving mood and so are the gopis and so they share this divine mood in endless ways. Thus Sri Krishna, sitting on the lap of Sri Yashodaji, is replete with the divine loving mood. Therefore, Sri Hariraiji has written in his letters to Sri Gopeshwarji, service to this Lord must be performed with great care because he is contrary in both his ways and his deeds. One moment he is pleased, the next angry, so do not engage your mind in worldly invo- involvements, but focus on the Lord. Be very careful to save him and serve him in such a way that he be not displeased. Concluding the reading here for today at the end of Tika 18. Tomorrow we continue with verse 19. So Vaishnava Uncle Jai Shri Krishna, Raj Ke Ananda Ki Jai, Shri Hari Rai Ji Ki Jai, Shri Balabhadi Shri Ki Jai, Jai Jai Shri Radhe.